Welcome back, and today we're working on a 510C Ray in Sandusky, Ohio. I'm going to walk you guys through exactly what I'm doing, some of the products I'm using. We're doing an annual upkeep on this C Ray, it's been maintained annually. So, all we're doing is a polish and wax, but it's going to be a fun one. I'm still learning a lot as this is my first full time year with the business. So, guys, I'm going to help you learn. I'm going to keep learning, and it's going to be fun. It's something I'm super passionate about. Guys, sit back, relax. It's going to be informative. It's going to be fun. Let's jump into the video right now. Hey, guys. So, Matt here. He is one of my helpers and he does great work. He's super passionate about detailing just like I am. And what he's doing here is he's putting compound and finishing material on the hull to make it shine up and really get the bring back some of the life of the boat. Like I said, it's not in bad condition, but we had to get some of the oxidation out and some minor scratching. So we're using a product called 3M compound and finishing material, which I'll throw up on the screen for you guys. This is a great product. It works very well. It's, I think it's more of like a compound than a finishing material. So you can actually mix polish in with the compound. And guys, this will leave a great finish. So he's putting it on with the applicator, right? He's using a wool pad. He has a rotary buffer, a DeWalt rotary buffer. And you know, that's really the best way to go about removing scratches, removing oxidation. Um, now in terms of finishing or polishing, I would recommend that you do two steps here. First you go, uh, first step with the wool pad, remove all the scratches, oxidation, switch over to a foam pad and finish that out. It's gonna leave a better polish because sometimes the wool pad will tend to leave holograms, not always, but sometimes. So now in this video, we don't have foam uh, pads with us at the moment. So we're just going through doing our polishing and compounding in one step. We're gonna come back later and we're gonna wax the surface with a polymer sealant. So guys, like I said, put the compound on the boat with an applicator. If you put it on the wool pad, which some people do, it kind of tends to spray around. But if you have a foam pad, go ahead and put the compound or the polish directly on the foam pad. It's going to absorb it more and you're not going to have that problem. Now, guys, I hope this is all making sense. I hope this is understandable. If it's not, go ahead and leave a comment below and I will answer it as soon as I can. So, guys, keep in mind, this is our first day on the project out of four total days. And we're just doing all our polishing, all our buffing right now in the hall, getting that all set up, all squared away so that then we can move to the top side and do that so guys right now i'm kind of reaching into some of the tighter spots you know that you can't actually fit a buffer into so what do you do here well you got to make the most of it so i'm simply putting uh the compound and the finishing material onto the applicator i'm rubbing it around the areas that i can't reach with the buffer and then you know i'm going to try to take it off with a uh, tool right here that you're going to see is, is a mini buffer it's a milwaukee mini buffer you can see it's got a yellow pad a yellow wool pad um, you know, it's a basically a blend between wool and synthetic and, you know, it's very similar to a buffing pad, but it helps you get into smaller spots and I'm doing the best I can. Any spots that I can't reach, I'm going to wipe off be by hand because there's really no other way to do it. You got to get the whole part of the bow. And guys, the back's actually turning up really nice. It's not as bad of a transom as most boats will typically be after being in the water for a full season. So this boat, you know, it's a 51 foot sea ray. It doesn't come out of the water um, between just about April to October. So it's in the water. Uh, it's not coming out. So guys, the transom can get kind of, uh, you know, it just grows a lot of marine growth. And this was not the case here. The transom was in great condition. So that was very good. We didn't have to do any extra work here. But as you see, I'm working it in and I'm wiping it off, doing the best I can and making the best of the situation. As you can see here again, I'm doing the best I can of the situation. I was just below on the bottom, doing the underneath of the transom. I hopped up on the swim platform to get the upper portion that I couldn't reach. I'm using the mini buffer again. I'm putting the compound and finishing material onto the applicator, rubbing it on and buffing it off. Then I'm wiping it down with a microfiber towel to get all the excess um, compound or any oils from the uh, compound off of the surface. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to continue working on that transom piece, getting that all finished out. And then we're going to move on, I think, to the upper portion onto the deck where I have one of my crew members. They are scrubbing the non-skid, cleaning that all up and getting it all ready because now we have to uh, start prepping the top side, start buffing up there, start uh, polishing and all that good stuff. 
This is Lincoln. He's one of my part-time helpers. So when we get super busy or we just need an extra hand on a big boat, Lincoln's going to help me. He's still in high school, but he does good work. So and I try to put him in the best place so that he can succeed. And guys, what he's doing here is he's scrubbing the non-skid. So I didn't show you guys this. We actually had one guy up here on the day on day one doing the buffing and polishing on this top side portion so i wasn't able to show that guys but that is done and after we do the buffing and polishing that's when we clean the non-skid we're using a medium a uh, stiff type of brush to kind of get any of the dirt off right this boat was in the water it came out of the water and it's out of the water between november to april because we are in ohio we're in the great lakes off of lake erie most boaters do not keep their boat in the water so guys you got to clean everything up get it all good i'm um, set so because this guy he wants a sealant on his non-skid to kind of keep it protected which is something i recommend but we don't always um, technically offer it, right? This is an add-on to our package. So normally we'll just clean the non-skid, but in this case, we're actually gonna buff it, polish it to a shine. So this is why we're cleaning it. Um, you know, I don't like to get too aggressive on the non-skid with the brushes, because it will scratch it up. You know, just like non-skid, it is fiberglass. Um, you know, but a lot of people's fiberglass on their non-skid, it's just simply oxidized, right? And you know, people like to say like, hey, I can't actually wax the non-skid because it'll make it slippery. Well, it depends first of all on what type of non-skid you have. If you have the diamond cut non-skid, you can wax that, you're gonna be fine. It's the technology of the non-skid that really keeps you from slipping. So he's working on that. Um, I'm actually working on the left side and I am doing some buffing. So as he's working on that, cleaning all that up, you can see he's done like the front or you know kind of where the windshield is he's done most of that up there he's working his way down now we're using super clean and deck cleaner which works tremendous we're using a stiff brush a medium bristle brush and we have a magic eraser just in case and guys this is turning out amazing if you guys have any more questions on the non-skid cleaning comment below and i will get to them when i can Once more, keep in mind that we did the buffing and polishing all in one step by mixing the 3M compounded finishing material with a machine polish, another 3M product. We mix those two together and it does both a compound and polishing all in one step. That's what we did on the hull, the top side of the cockpit. That's what we did on the entire boat. So I don't actually have any footage of us buffing the cockpit, but we did that as well. Just as I had limited footage of us doing the top side i mainly had the hull but everything got buffed and polished all in one step and now what i'm doing so once you're done with all the polishing and compounding you want to wipe down the surface especially since we're inside and we don't have access to water and we don't have access to washing the boat um with soap so we what we want to do is we want to take 99 percent isopropanol alcohol and we want to wipe down the entire boat all the fiberglass because what happens is the compound in the polish it leaves an oil onto the surface and guys it will strip your wax off faster so what we want to do is we want to wipe the whole surface down and get all those oils off the boat before we wax it and this is going to make your wax or your sealant last twice as long um you know if not twice as long uh you know at least one and a half times as long so guys i recommend this step especially if you're indoors to do it guys it takes a little bit of time but it is so worth it. You're not gonna see any splotchiness. You're not gonna see you know, any uh, cloudiness once you do this step. So guys, I'm working on that now. And then after this, you know, we're gonna be ready to apply our polymer sealant, which is what I use on the boats. I don't use a wax because it doesn't last as long as a polymer sealant. And what I'm gonna be using is called Power Lock Plus, um, and is a polymer sealant. It's gonna last, and it's gonna provide a nice wet good glossy shine to the boat we are on to day three and keep in mind that we are done polishing we're done buffing we are done putting the isopropanol alcohol on the fiberglass all that is finished and we are now waxing with our sealant called power lock plus a polymer sealant that leaves a great shine and you're going to let it sit on the surface 
for about at least a half hour but we're gonna let it sit for two hours because we're in we're inside we're in storage and it's only about 60 degrees so we got to give it that extra time to dry and really haze over so that we can leave the best shine and finish possible so keep in mind we have switched from the rotary buffer into a tool called the flex this is a forced action polisher which means no matter how hard you press on the fiberglass it's not going to stop spinning so this makes it great for polishing minor buffing or waxing this is a great multi-purpose tool i recommend it to have it in your arsenal now it is expensive it's about 400 dollars but if you're a detailer or even a boat owner that loves to maintain their boat this is a good tool to have and that's what makes it different from a uh, DA which is a dual action posture is it does not stop the harder you press on the fiberglass so keep in mind guys we're putting the polymer sealant onto the foam pad and then once we get on the foam pad we're dabbing it around on the fiberglass a close eye on the kind of the pattern I'm doing I'm going side to side really spreading it around you know you can do about a two by two or a three by three foot section when you're applying the wax onto the boat and yeah I'm just going side to side going up and down making sure I get all spots of the fiberglass filling in all the pores and it's really that simple if you guys have any questions as I'm going through this remember just comment below and I'll get back with you as soon as I can the whole haul has been applied with wax and now I'm walking through showing you guys you can see the haze the cloudiness this is the wax the sealant sitting on the surface of the haul and guys like I said we're gonna let it dry for a couple hours and then we're gonna simply take it off by hand but yeah, this is the great thing about using the flex is it, or using anything, you know, like a DA or anything to put the wax on is it's going to keep it nice and thin. I've actually put this on by hand before and it's just a lot harder to actually get a thin, nice coat. You're going to waste a lot more product. So I always recommend putting the wax on with a tool like a DA or the flex. Matt right here is actually using a DA. I was using the flex, but it really doesn't make a difference. So there it is, guys. There's the wax sitting on the hull. The footage you just saw is Zach, he's on the top side and he's sealing the non-skid which we're going to jump into later but yeah I have three guys helping me on this boat, it's a large project and it's a four day project, it's a big boat. So now what we're doing here is we let the wax sit for two hours, now when I say wax, you know wax and sealant same thing, uh, you guys get what I'm saying. So. We're gonna use a two towel method. I'm gonna wipe off the wax initially with one towel and then come by with the second towel as kind of a finish. So it's really simple. You just wipe it off, it comes off very easy. If you let it sit, haze over and dry long enough, um, it, it comes off super easy. And yeah, you're just gonna take it off with two towels, get it really good, get it perfect. You guys, you wanna make sure you get all the wax or sealant off of the boat. And this is really the best way to go about it. And yeah, your arm's gonna get tired, but it is so worth it in the end. Especially since this is a 51 foot haul, I'm doing the whole side by myself. It'll get tiring, but guys, the shine that this leaves is crazy. And I'll show you some footage of it soon. Hey guys, I finally got some footage of the cockpit for you. We did all our steps. We let the wax sit on here, and now Matt is wiping it off with two towels, just like we were doing on the haul. And guys, it's a full teak, real teak cockpit, very nice. The ceiling in here leaves an incredible gloss. And it's just an incredible boat, incredible cockpit. We finally made it to the top side and here is where we're doing the deck sealing. We are simply sealing the non-skid with our polymer sealant, the same stuff we put on the hull. And all I'm doing is I'm going to put some of the product from the bottle onto the non-skid, kind of spread it around. Now all I'm going to do is get a buffer, a rotary buffer with the wool pad and I'm going to run side to side 
and then you're gonna notice that I'm gonna run up and down I'm gonna get hit the non skid this is diamond cut non skid so I'm gonna hit this non skid from all sides make sure I seal it really good yeah all you're gonna do pour the product on the non skid buff it off to a shine and then you're gonna take a microfiber towel and you're gonna wipe down the section that you did and what this is gonna do is it's gonna seal the non skid guys so you know it's taking extra care extra precaution where mo many boaters you know they don't do that they you know keep the non skid they keep it dull they keep it all scratched up right they take a hard bristle brush to it which is nothing that i recommend i recommend you do this but again this is an add-on to our package where customers actually pay more for a service like that but he's one of our washing customers and that is the owner of the boat um so we wash his boat we like to maintain it the best we can and you know we're gonna apply some sio2 coatings on it and all that stuff once the summer gets here guys so this is the process for doing it again if this is new to you ask me any questions below and i'll try to answer them i hope this is helpful i hope i'm making sense to you guys um let's jump into the next section Now, as I'm finishing up sealing the non-skid, Matt is gonna come through and he's gonna wax the fiberglass with the polymer sealant that we've been using for this entire boat. And, you know, like I said, so basically, does it matter if you seal the non-skid or if you wax the fiberglass first? No, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that everything gets buffed and polished before you do any waxing, right? All that has to be done then in terms of the non-skid versus the fiberglass you can wax whichever one you want first i usually do the non-skid first and then come back and do the um the fiberglass last but that, that is up to you guys it does not make a difference uh really so enjoy matt he is doing his uh waxing and we are now going to jump into some more video footage back to the cockpit zach is in here really doing just a lot of cleanup work a lot of tedious work that just simply takes some time you know we have to spray we have to clean all the final seats down with a magic eraser and purple power to clean them all off very good it's a degreaser a uh, purple power super clean are two great degreasers that you can clean non-skid with you can clean vinyl seats with and they do great job so he's cleaning that up and guys i didn't get any footage of him actually cleaning up the vinyl seats but he did do that and then since you're stripping all the oils off of them you want to spray it with some sort of protectant and we use 303 protectant so he did all that on the seats now he's going through he's cleaning up all any vinyl on the inside of the boat um and then he's going to be hitting windows he's going to be hitting glass windows eyes and glass windows and just cleaning everything up nice and good you know just a lot of tedious work that takes some time and people forget about these things He's also cleaning compartments, hatch tracks, you know, he's making the boat look presentable so that when the customer comes in here, we know, or that he knows that we did the best job and we didn't cut corners and we did it right. Cause that's what he's paying us to. He's paying us for us to do it right. And that's what we're going to do. Back to the top side, me and Matt are finishing up the final touches on the top side. So I'm finishing up the non-skid, sealing the non-skid with our polymer sealant. And I didn't mention this before, but as you can see in the video, I have the buffer turned on, turned sideways. So I'm not actually using the face of the pad. I'm using the side and the edges of the pad because what that's going to do is it's just going to get in, into all those crevices of the non-skid and really polish it up the best way possible. Because if you use it flat like it normally should be used with the wool pad, you're not going to get into all the cracks and you're going to be able to tell. So turn your buffer on the side and get everything make sure you get it really good go back and forth and then go vertical up and down and get everything so i'm going to come through i'm going to finish that up on the starboard side of the boat and then matt is going to come through and he's going to simply wax the rest so we're kind of doing this both kind of at the same time which that's fine too like i said it doesn't really make a difference just get everything waxed and get it good Alright, everything has been waxed. The non-skid, all fiberglass, cockpit, topside, hull, done. 
So this is the first chance you gotta look at the hall of wax. Now look at that incredible shine that you can see with the current lighting in the facility. Guys, it's incredible shine, amazing. It's super slick. What, what essentially what this product does, this Power Lock Plus, is it's a water sheeting product, meaning that the water is not gonna stay on the boat. It's gonna sheet right off the boat and nothing's gonna be staying on it, which is really good because you know you can use a product that's gonna beat up the water, but the water's just gonna sit on the surface. The great thing about this polymer sealant is it's water sheeting, so it's gonna sheet off of the boat. So anyways, we are now doing the rub rail, cleaning up the rub, rub rail and the um, vinyl around the rub rail, right? Clean that up good, uh, doing some, uh, now I like to use colonite metal wax on all stainless steel, all bright work. That's what we're gonna use on that. So I'm just going through guys, more tedious work and just getting a ladder and moving down the whole rail and just cleaning it all up, cleaning the vinyl around the rub rail and then waxing the actual rub rail to keep it in, in good condition. And actually, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be hitting up these windows. You can see these little side windows on the hall. I'm going to hit those up with metal wax as well, clean the windows. Just get everything good and get everything clean. I actually forgot, but now we're hitting the swim platform. We always hit the swim platform last in terms of the non-skid because we're always stepping up and off, down and up onto the boat, and it's always getting dirty. So I'll either lay a towel down or something. But anyways, we always do this step last just to ensure that it's very clean and you know protected and, and we're not getting foot marks on the non-skid. So this is the very last step after everything. We're gonna hit this up and that's gonna be the end of the project. I'm gonna get pictures, video footage, and yeah, we're just sealing the deck again, as I showed before, with the rotary buffer and the wool pad, sealing it nice and good. And the swim platform gets a lot of traffic. It gets dirty, so you wanna hit this good. It's, you're probably gonna have to scrub a lot to clean it but afterwards it's gonna be all worth it and that's exactly what happened here. Guys, this is a wrap to the project, but don't go just yet. The after footage, it's gonna blow your mind. It is crazy, it's shiny, it's incredible, and it's coming right now. Check it out. everyone for watching if you support me if you support what i'm doing leave the video a like drop a comment i will answer the comments and guys share the video so that other people can see exactly what we're doing we're growing together we're gonna make this fun we're gonna learn along the way and guys i will see you on the next one